embracing grace and I want to just kind of break ground this morning uh, concerning this and I because I truly believe that this is going to get us to another level in our lives now when I'm going to talk to you about grace uh, I'm, I'm not taking out the factor of faith okay so don't don't feel like, oh, now here we go, we're going to talk about this grace thing. But some of y'all might not even know about grace and that it's important to know about grace because this is how us as new believers are supposed to and are going to be able to function or are, are functioning. This is the way we are to function, all right? Uh, embrace, somebody say embracing grace. Embracing grace. Uh, because we want to find out from the get-go out of Ephesians chapter 2 how grace and faith are both to work together to make this happen. All right? Look at this out of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and, and through 9 in the King James translation. Uh, and it says this. It says, uh, for by grace are you saved. All right? So for by grace... Are you saved again? But you have to go through faith. Are you there? So listen, both of them working together. You can't have grace without faith, and you can't have faith without grace. So you were saved by grace through faith, and that not of yourselves. Okay, not of yourselves, it's you were saved. It is the gift of God. Someone say the gift of God. Look what the verse 9 says. Not of works, lest any man should boast. All right. Once again, God's understanding that, that you were saved by grace through faith, but not out of yourselves. In other words, you didn't save yourself. You didn't get on that cross and get crucified um, but Jesus does give you the benefits of what he did because it says that you are now seated at the right hand of the father in heavenly places are you, are you with me so he did give you a benefit now that that's where you're at you have a position and this position that because when you receive Jesus, this position is a position that you can always look to whenever things get a little troublesome down here on this earth. Because Jesus said, your will be done, uh, that, uh, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, what's, what's in heaven? You are there. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Are you with me? So that you can see you sitting at the right hand of the Father, bring that vision and bring that sight and, and that down here to earth. Because down here on this earth, there's going to be a lot of temptation. Because down here on this earth, there's going to be a lot of trial. There's going to be a lot of pulling of you away from God. Are you with me? There is. And, 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 and so this is where you got to understand Jesus died on the cross for me so that when I received him, now I can have this grace of being able to sit at the right hand of the Father. Because there's a lot of people who don't believe that they're worthy of God's grace. They feel that they're still sinners. They feel that they're still, they're still having to beat themselves up. So because of what they do, now they can't come to God. That, that, a, lot of, a lot of people believe that way. They think, man, you know, you got to. Now, it does, the Bible does say to come to him with fear and trembling, but it's, it's in faith that you're coming to him. Are you, are you with me? Okay, so give him grace. All right. Look, look what it says here in Ephesians, in the New Living Translation, the same scripture. It says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. All right. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Hmm. OK, listen to this. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. Uh oh, yeah, there are some people who believe that because they do a lot of good things and those good things, that's what makes them to be saved. Religion is big on that. 
You, you, I'm serious. There are a group of people that ride bikes around town, and they go, and they're doing all these things for you because they believe that the more that they do for you, the more God will give them this grace to get to where they need to get to. But they don't believe that Jesus, okay, so that's the whole totally different thing. Anyways, they don't believe that Jesus died on the cross for their sins. All right? So it says here that it is not, salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done. So none of us can boast about it, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. All right, here, here, here it is. Uh, uh, listen, watch. You're not good because you do good things. You do good things because he is good. Amen. Can, can, can I say that again? Are we on Facebook Live? I'm, I'm telling y'all who are listening to me right now, you're not good because you do good things. You do good things because he is good. Amen. He is good in your life. The Bible says it is his goodness that leads men to repentance. Amen. Jesus didn't come down here to talk to you about your sin. He didn't. He came to eradicate sin so that you can now, you don't have to have an excuse or blame that you can't come to God. <laughs> and, and, and listen, if Jesus didn't come down here to talk to you about your sin, neither am I. I'm here to talk to you about God's goodness. Because it's God's goodness that leads you to repentance. If you can understand God's goodness, it'll take you out of all that messed up junk that you're getting yourself into. See, you're not seeing the position that you have in heaven. The position you have in heaven is that you're sitting at the right hand of the Father. But you don't see that while you're sitting at the right hand of the devil on this earth. You're, you're, looking, <laughs> at, uh, you're looking at other things. Y'all didn't get that when I said that. Okay, so anyways, so here the thing is, is that mm, his goodness leads you and I. To the point where we can do the good things, watch, he has planned for us a long time ago. Amen. Somebody going to get this this morning. Uh, and, and listen, if you're falling asleep, it's because you're about to wake up. Okay? I understand that concept. I used to do it all the time. And all of a sudden, it's like, boom, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Amen! Oh, my gosh. Listen to this. Romans 12, 2 through 3. Praise God. Romans 12. Uh, it says this uh, in the New Living Translation. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person. Here it is. By changing the way you think. Okay? It says, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect, uh, because of the privilege and authority God has given me, I give each of you this warning. Don't think you are better than you really are. Be honest in your evaluation of yourselves, measuring yourselves by the faith God has given us. Okay, so we're not seeing God do certain things in our lives. Man, I've been calling out to God. I've been crying out to God. I've been doing all these things. We're not seeing God do anything. Okay, so switch it up now. That's good. You've been doing all, this stuff, all those things. See, God's not a man that he shall lie. He says in his word that he hears your prayers. Okay, and, and in one, and there's another uh, scripture that says that he even remembers your, your giving. He remembers your offerings, your sacrifices. Okay, so it's time to switch it up. It's time to enter into grace through faith. Mm. Too many times we're crying out to God sometimes. It's, it's just like, because you just don't know if God can. No, he can. And he will. Okay? Now, I truly believe, Sister Irma, that the reason I'm here is because somebody prayed me to this place. 
I, I, I was a heathen. Y'all guys got to know this. I was a heathen, gentilian. Yeah, y'all with me? <laughs> gentilian, I didn't even know that's a word. But anyways, I was one of those, and some, y'all laughing, y'all know, because y'all were one too. Y'all were there. We're on that same boat. Nobody want to walk out on water. Peter, you do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, all right. We're there. Hey, I like doing what I did, what I used to do. Oh, I did. I liked being out there and being a hustler and a bustler. I liked all that stuff. Now, I'm not trying to glorify that. What I'm saying is I used to like doing that. But I had a mom. I had a mom who every time I come in, I'm praying for you, son. She looked me in the eye. You want something to eat? I'm like, you should be yelling at me. Remember, her name is Grace. She's like, you want me to cook you something? You hungry? Like, you're supposed to be yelling at me. What, what do you mean you're going to cook? Yeah, I'm hungry. Come on. She said, because I'm a junior. But yeah, no, I don't ever call me junior in here. Cause, uh, yeah. She said, junior. I'm praying for you. And I know that one day, and he, she, she said this, I know that God listens to my prayers. Amen. And I know that one day, God's going to take you away from all those friends. And God's going to take you away from all that trouble. Como tu gustan los huevos? How do you like the eggs? <laughs> all right? And then she, but she kept telling me, I'm praying for you. Every single time, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for you. And then my stepdad would say, Ana, tu mamá, llorando, y anda. You know, she's praying, and I'm over there for you. And you need to get out of all that. I was like, I don't want to hear nothing about that. But September 22nd, 2002 showed up in my life. That day, I gave my life to Jesus. Amen. All right, all right, all right. And all I could think about was my mom. She was praying for me. In the midnight hour, 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, 4 o'clock in the morning, I get home. My mom's sitting there waiting for me at 5 o'clock in the morning. She hadn't slept all night, but she rested in God. Amen. <laughs> my mom's name is Grace. God gave me a mom by the name of Grace so that I could know what grace is. You guys know the story? My dad, he left. I, I, so I grew up being my own father. I never had the opportunity to be a son. You yeah, know the story? I shared it during Father's Day. So I needed to be taught some things. And God had me the whole time. I was just running. I was just being rebellious. You know, I should have gotten to some things. I, I should have been in prison. As many people as I treated bad and did things to and gave them things that they shouldn't have got, different kind of candy. Yeah, but watch. But when I came to Jesus, Brother Gilbert, that whole, that whole thought of who I was died. I realized that I just had a funeral for that person. It was so much that when I went to go, listen, my brother my brother, he's my next oldest brother, when I would come to his house, you know, he told me one time, he told me this. He said, he said, bro, I miss my brother. I said, I'm, I'm right here. He's like, no. He had seen so much of a difference that he told me he misses his brother. I'm like, I'm still here, bro. What are you talking about? I'm, I'm, I'm your brother. He goes, no, you changed. You're not the same anymore. And I miss that person. And I'm like, I don't. We had a funeral for that guy, man. That guy was on the way to something wrong and something bad. And I didn't want that in my life. No, I'm serious. I, listen, this is how bad it was, brother. It was so bad. I did not want to do anything with violent movies anymore. I didn't want to watch wrestling. I didn't want to watch boxing. I didn't even want to watch nothing with violence, beating up people, none of that. I didn't want to watch any of that. I didn't want to listen to any aggressive music. I didn't want to listen to anything that had to do with that. All I wanted was God's love in my life because I felt that inside me and his grace. Oh my God, we're there. 
So watch. I had to learn how to walk in this love. And as I learned to walk in this love, it fueled my faith. But this whole time, all that was covered in God's grace. And I had to learn that, hey, I might not be worthy in my own sight. I might not be worthy in man's sight, but I am certainly worthy in his. And he thought about me when he laid his life down over 2,000 years ago. And I have to learn to reflect back on that every now and then to remind me that old man is dead, Bert. You're not going to do those things anymore. Listen, I got, I got taken off of drugs and addiction and, 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 and tormenting people and, and, and Satanism and witchcraft and pornography, okay? I got taken away from all that cussing and all that stuff. And one day, overnight, in one day. So you can't tell me it's not possible my children don't change or let them come to Jesus. Because I understand that when I came to Jesus, it, boom, it changed right there. It changed right there. And I understand some people will tell me, well, it takes time. Yeah, I understand that it takes time. And it can for you if you want to. But you just haven't received and appreciate what he has done for you. <laughs> how many of y'all thank God he saved you? Amen. Come on. How many of y'all thank God he saved you? Listen, we're not walking this earth. If you belong to Jesus, you're not walking this earth cursed. No. If you gave your life to Jesus, you're not walking this earth in sin. I got to tell somebody that. Because it seems like other believers always want to pull out the sin. Pull out the sin. Wait. Jesus already pulled out the sin. What you're doing now is you're walking in the works of the flesh. It talks about in Galatians chapter 5. A person who walks in the flesh does not need salvation. They need repentance. And listen, the word repent, watch. That word pent, P-E-N-T, comes from the number 5. 5, the pentagram, the pentagon, five sides. Repent, 5. 5 is the number of grace. So when you repent, that means you're coming back to grace. That means you're worthy. That means that, yeah, you got into the flesh. No, sin no longer exists in it. No, no, you are in the flesh now. And the flesh needs repentance. Come back to grace through faith and see God restore you. Amen. Praise God. Come on. I know. I know. I'm back there. I'm back there. I'm not talking. Listen, I'm sorry, Brother Gary. I'm, it's not that I'm trying to talk. It's just I'm just saying. Y'all guys are listening, and you're, like, pulling me in. <laughs> you know? I'm like Speedy Gonzalez to the cheese. Remember that? I remember that. I remember that. Okay. All right. Are we good? Y'all getting this? Are we excited about this? We're going, I'm telling you, we're going to learn some stuff. It's going, it's going to be good. See, some of y'all, I told y'all, when y'all were bobbing your head a while ago, it just means you're about to wake up. See, now y'all awake now. Everybody's like, amen. <laughs> My God. John chapter 8, verse 2. Thank y'all so much. Y'all guys are patient with me, I know. Sometimes I just like to talk. I'm a, I'm a preacher. Okay. I saw my wife does not let me go into Walmart by myself. She's like, uh, I'll go get the stuff. You sit right here. Okay. Sure. Why not? She's like, you talk to everybody. Can't we just go in there and grab? I'm like, I love people. All right. So John chapter 8. Here we go. But early, in the New Living Translation, but early the next morning, Jesus was back again at the temple, like he was this morning, or like he is right now. He's at the temple. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. I should teach sitting down one day, just, just like Jesus did. I just sit down. What, what is he doing? I'm just doing like Jesus did. Anyways, so he sat down, and he taught them. As he was speaking, here comes, the, here comes religion trying to interrupt. The teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman 
who had been caught in the act of adultery. <laughs> we're sitting at a table one time. Who was with me? We were sitting at a table. And they were like, we're, we're, I think we're at the Believers Convention. Some of us were like, I'd probably be like, and they were just kind of naming these people. I, uh, Sister, uh, Sister Polly was like, I'd probably be more, more I was probably like Peter. And then he said, I'll, I'll be more like Peter. And then somebody else said, oh, I'll, I'll probably be more like uh, Matthew. Or I don't know who they, who, what was the other person they said? I don't know who it was. Anyways, they, 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 they named the character from the Bible. I was more like David. And then they looked at me, and I was like, I was probably more like the woman caught in adultery. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, uh, you know, and they were all like, Pastor, burn. I was like, well, hey, we, we're just here. I mean, come on. Everybody wants to be the prestigious. I'm like, man, I'll probably be that woman right there. I mean, that woman. Anyways, uh, yeah, okay, good. Y'all got it. <laughs> just take it how it goes. Just let it go. All right. Don't be dreaming about it. Uh, as he was speaking to you, okay, so they put her, watch, look at this. They, uh, a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. All right. Uh, they put her in front of the crowd. Oh, yeah. They'll pull your sin out real quick. Religion. This they will. Easy. Oh, pues mira. Okay, anyways, y'all guys know what I'm talking about. Okay, so. All right. Okay. Uh, and they put her in front of the crowd. Okay. And then they said, teacher. They said to Jesus. Remember, this is Jesus you're talking to. This woman was caught in the act. Does, do y'all know what adultery is? Okay, good. You're like, what's this? Okay, that's all adultery. The act of adultery. All right, so that's a bad thing. Okay, guys, it's a bad thing. Here's what they said. The law of Moses says to stone her. They wanted to stone her, bro, and I'm not talking about ganja. They were. They wanted to throw a rock. Listen, they would say these rocks were big and they were heavy and they would. I mean, it would hurt you, and they would throw these rocks at you. Okay. The law of Moses said to stone her, and then they said, "What do you say?" And listen to what they were trying to do. They were trying to trap him into saying something they could use against him, but Jesus stooped down and wrote in the dust with his finger. There's so many revelations of that. I don't, I don't know what he wrote. God hasn't given me that yet. But they kept demanding an answer. So he stood up again and he said, all right. Let the one who has never sinned throw the first stone. He didn't even look. Then he stooped down again and wrote in the dust. When the accusers heard this. Notice he uses the word accuser. Does anybody here know who the accuser of the brethren is? Who is it? Satan. When people are accusing you, listen, that's not of God. Understand that and recognize that that is of the devil. Religion is in partnership with the devil. I'm just saying that. Okay, are you with me? They slipped away one by one. They're going to start slipping away from you guys. All right? You keep doing what you're doing. God's on your side. Right? Get a hold of this faith and grace thing, and you'll see how God's going to take you to a place where you need to get to. Watch. Look at this. Okay? Uh, all right. Um, they kept the man's hand, so he stood up. All right? Um, beginning with the oldest, start slipping away. Until only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with a woman. That's all you need to be with you, family. Because I'm going to tell you right now, sometimes family members are part of the worst ones. Easy. Porque andas, why you, and why you, you need to, and this, and I, and, but watch. You just need Jesus, man. You need Jesus right there fighting for you. Because, yeah, you might have some issues going on inside you, but it says that he's making you a new creation. You are his workmanship. It means he's working inside you. You got to let him work inside you. Okay? I know sometimes we're under construction. That's what people will say. I'm under construction right now. I understand that. But keep letting him work in you. Okay? You keep your connection to Jesus because Jesus is the one that's going to stay there with you when everybody else leaves. All right? Okay? 
It says, uh, then Jesus stood up, uh, and, and, and only Jesus was left in the middle of the crowd with the woman. Then Jesus stood up again and said to the woman this time, where are your accusers? Didn't even one of them condemn you? She, she said, no, Lord. And Jesus said, neither do I. She was caught in adultery. She should have been stoned. Come on, according to the law. But we're going to learn next Sunday that you no longer are under the law, but you are under grace. Amen. Right. Amen. Now, and I'll talk about it next Sunday. Grace is not saying that he's giving you a license to sin. That's not what it's saying. It's saying, watch, look, it's giving you a license to repent. Amen. <laughs> it's giving you a license to re-grace. Oh, yeah, I didn't get that. Are you with me? Get back to grace again because you have fallen into the law. And now because you fall into the law, you're condemning your own self. And then you're letting other people condemn you because you're connecting the law with the law. But you're not under the law anymore. You're under grace. And under grace, all you need is Jesus. All you need is Jesus left with you. If Jesus is the only person left with you right there, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more, praise God. Because you are under grace, re-grace, repent, get back to God, praise God, and let him work his stuff in you. Jesus' name. Did y'all get that? Yes, sir. My gosh. Whew. I'm excited about this thing. Because oh, it's going to get us to the kingdom. It's going to get us to begin to start thinking kingdom-minded not religious-minded, watch, not even churchy-minded, kingdom-minded. And you're going to see, next Sunday I'll talk to you about the kingdom and how it's connected to grace and faith. You'll see all this. You guys ought to be getting excited about this series right here because this is going to be good. And it's only going to get gooder. Stand on your feet. Praise God. We're done. Amen.